Good morning, and thank you for starting another day with PAX TV. You're tuned into Artistically Speaking. I'm John Baldino. This morning, we take a look at the Corner Bistro Dinner Theater. It's a theater that has a history of firsts in the city of Carbondale. It was the first dinner theater to operate in Carbondale. It was the first theater to produce a number of shows, including Mr. Christmas, Pushing Up Dozies, and so many others that have been produced in Carbondale and will go on to be produced all over the place, including London's West End and possibly Broadway one day. And it also was a first of many firsts with a show called Nonsense, a little musical comedy written by Dan Goggin that played off Broadway for many, many years and opened at the Corner Bistro several years ago. It's gone on to be produced again and again at the Bistro. Corner Bistro was the first in Northeastern Pennsylvania ever to produce Nonsense. They were the first in Northeastern Pennsylvania ever to produce Nonsense 2, The Second Coming, its sequel. They were the first to produce Nuncrackers, a Nonsense Christmas musical. And four years ago, they were the very first theater in the country outside of the off-Broadway production to produce Nonsense Amen, the original script with the all-male cast. Well, I'm joined today by the man who spearheaded all of those firsts, the executive director and executive producer of the Corner Bistro, Rob Misko. Robbie, good morning and welcome morning. to the show. Thank you. So did I, I think I summed it up right in uh, all of the firsts of nonsense, am That's I right? Uh, we're kind of nonsense addicts, and nonsense <laughs> also uh, was able to put our show on the theater map as far as people getting to know who we were. Mm -hmm. um, we were established for a couple of years, but it was quiet and a slow running, but as soon as nonsense hit, we kind of put us as that nun theater as we so much are referred to over and over. But uh, it kind of made us who we are today, and we kept it going. How did it all start that you became the Nun Theater, that you decided to do nonsense that first time? Well, um, I I'm a, became addicted to the show, first of all, mm -hmm. uh, going to Catholic school all my life. And I just thought it was probably the only comedy that I actually laughed out loud at. And I saw the tour with Dodie Goodman. And from there, I knew I wanted to direct it. I wanted to produce it at our theater, and it was a lot of talk all over about people wanting to see it. So we went to uh, Pocono Playhouse, and we saw it, I think, four or five times up there, and I brought people, and we just kept, be afterwards we talked with the actresses, and one actress said to me, I bet you if you call tomorrow morning, you guys will get the rights. And <clears throat> the word was kind of out that everybody was trying to get the rights, all the theaters in this area, mm -hmm. and I follow her lead, I did what she told me to, and they granted us the rights, and uh, there was quite a lot of talk that all the theaters could not figure out how in the world this little <laughs> theater that no one knew about also obtained the rights to the show that everybody wanted to do. And that was when? How many years ago? Uh, 1992 was wow. the first time we did it. And we were fortunate enough to have uh, one of the actresses who did the tour um, through uh, the area came and did the show with us. So she brought us a lot of uh, information, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of background, and some wonderful choreography to base it on. Uh, and the other four performers were local, and it turned into an amazing, amazing cast. Um, and from then on, we did Nonsense itself uh, in 92, twice, I believe, in 93, 94, uh, and 95, I think. Altogether, we did five runs of female version of Nonsense. Um, and I guess our claim to fame would be Terry Kilker, who plays Sister mm -hmm. Amnesia, who ran through all the performances. She was our only sister who remained with us for all five productions. And ended up doing, what did uh, we tally the number at? Well, over, well 100 over 100 performances. performances. Yes. I remember somewhere, maybe around the fourth or fifth time it was produced, sitting in the audience for a show that was being produced before Nonsense. And I remember you standing on stage announcing that our next show will be Nonsense. And after that, we will fold up the habits and put them away and now produce the show again. Well, here we are in 2002, getting ready for another production Production of Nonsense, amen, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> question mark, indeed. Um, I think when we did it, Nonsense, amen, the first time, uh, being an honor, as you said, the first, uh, literally when we called for the rights, a friend of mine clipped out the newspaper article and said they're doing it with guys, and of course my dream would come true to be able to mm -hmm. be on stage after having this love for the show. And we called and the rights weren't available, and literally the man at the, the royalty agency called Dan Goggin himself at his home, and he was very gracious to say, let them do it before it's even available. He sent off runoff copies of music. He sent a beautiful Christmas card, you know, letting us know we did it. Uh, we went out to see the nuns and say man off Broadway. We got to meet him, tell him we were doing it. Um, and I thought we would do it once, and that would be, we'd be done. Mm -hmm. We'd retired again. Uh, <laughs> then we brought the guys back again. We did a second run, and I never in a million years guessed that we would be doing a third production of nonsense, um, amen, slash question mark. Um, but of course, different people, you know, plant the idea in, in your head and, mm -hmm. and go on from there. So, 
here we are. Although we are doing something different, we've done it with all men, we've done it with all women, and I feel that this nonsense is called the best of because we're bringing back some of the, the guys who did it before and experienced as well as some of the women and putting together what I think is probably going to be the best nonsense out of, out of all of them. And to our knowledge, this is the first ever mixed cast production. Yes, yes, it's something that we're going to try. Um, but we feel that it's going to work because even as with the guys, once they're up there, it's five minutes of kind of giggles that it's guys and habits, and then after that, it's all just the sisters. They're just nuns. Yes. Now, for those who have been maybe living under a rock for the past 10 years and don't know the show, give us a, a synopsis. What's it all about? Uh, it's about five sisters who do a fundraiser to raise money to bury the last of the deceased sisters. And although that sounds, how in the world could that be a comedy? Um, they were all food poisoned by Sister Julia, child of God, in a tragic accident with fishy swa soup. And now they have to raise money to bury these sisters, so they put on this fundraiser. And um, the problem is that the rest of the sisters are in the freezer because they didn't have enough money to bury them because Reverend Mother bought a VCR, and now they have to come up with the last of the money to bury the last of the sisters. Uh, it's a full night. It's kind of the nun's musical review type show, but mm -hmm. with lots of anecdotes, lots of great music and dancing, uh, and, and a lot of laughter. I mean, if you need to laugh, this is the show to come to. And there's a little bit of interaction. The yes, show, right? that, that's the nice part I think about is that wall is down. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's not interactive where they're all talking to us all the time, but that wall is down where in the beginning of the show, uh, the sisters get to mingle with the audience. And that wall is down so the people feel like they're actually part of that fundraiser to raise money and get to know the nuns a lot more than just sitting there and watching a play. Uh, so it is, in a sense, an interactive show that they can enjoy. So what was it like for you after all of those years of directing the show and producing it to finally get into the habit and step up on stage? Uh, no pun intended, heaven. Um, <laughs> to be able to finally do, first of all, a role um, you know, like Reverend Mother and to be able to play, that was wonderful. But act, having this dream of directing it and then directing it and seeing it come together with some wonderful actresses throughout our area. Uh, and then finally getting the opportunity to put everything that I took from them mm -hmm. and everything that we did together and to put it on stage and wear that habit um, was wonderful. And at first, I thought, oh, I didn't know how they would take it, but it's probably one of my favorite roles and, uh, you know, one of the easiest ones that I'm most comfortable with. Well, then it's my next question. Was, was it a challenge? I mean, she's um, a departure from yourself. Well, not entirely a departure from yeah. yourself. But. She's still, uh, she still has a lot of, you know, she's the leader, she's the qualities. Uh -huh. She's putting the show together, uh, which I'm normally have. Mm -hmm. um, in a challenge of a sense, didn't know how the audience, I guess, would accept it all. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think because doing it and seeing it over well over 100 times, uh, it was already up there. So I didn't know what would come out, but it just came out, you know, and uh, it's a little scary when your friends say the part that you're meant to play was not only a woman, but a nun. So I don't know how much, if that's a compliment or not a compliment compared to other roles, but uh, it is one of my favorite roles. It's a lot of fun to just have five people, uh, five friends, and, and, get, and make a product that the people certainly go home smiling about. So nonsense, amen, slash question mark, the, the mixed cast version goes up next weekend. Yes. Uh, Mother's Day weekend, 11th and 12th, and the 17th, 18th, and 19th. Uh, tickets are selling fast, I understand. Very fast. Um, we have very limited seating available, but uh, as long as the calls keep coming in, we will give, you know, we'll make sure that the seats are there if we have to extend or add shows on. Uh, but they are selling fast, so to make sure that you, know, you get to see this first and this uh, great show, they would need to call very fast because people are eating them up. And to our surprise, we would think everyone has seen the show. Mm -hmm. So many calls or people have never seen it. But Thank God, also, it's one of those shows where it doesn't matter how many times you see it, there's always something different. Oh, it's almost it's always new. developed a cult following. Yeah, and true. Very true. Some people have seen it every single time we've done it, mm -hmm. and they're still coming back. And it's 282 is the number for tickets, 282 at the corner of Easter Dinner Theater in Carbondale. Uh, there's also another, this, this won't be a first, I'm sorry. Uh, the first was Nun Crackers, but where you'll be sharing the stage with your wife. Yes. Both as nuns. Yes, uh, when we did Nuncrackers, it was supposed to be women and one priest, and mm -hmm. our Reverend Mother uh, threw out her back five days beforehand, and no matter what we tried to get someone to take over a role in five days, they couldn't. Having directed noted, I jumped in there. Uh, lo you know, Reverend Mother is already there, so it was great, but for my wife and I to be standing next to each other for pictures, both as <laughs> nuns, um, was truly, it was fun, but uh, you know, it's one of those things where I'm sure in years to come we'll just sit and laugh about.
So this will be fun to have her again back on stage with, with Reverend Mother. It'll be one of those pictures that your daughter digs up yes, one day she will. and yes. laughs at. This time around, when now that she knows more, you know, and she sees mom and dad in their habits, I'm sure it'll make a lasting uh, impression in her head. And we're starting a fund, by the way, to pay for Rory's uh, therapy when she gets older. So feel free to con go ahead and contribute to that. Um, so we've also got, tell me a little bit about the, the cast of the upcoming. You've got your wife yes, going to play. This is uh, her second time in this role. Yes. Uh, although she never did the nonsense original show, mm -hmm. uh, she has played Sister Robert Ann again. So she's raring and ready to go. Uh, and you know, once you establish that character, it fits in anywhere. So she's very excited. And that's one of the hardest characters to establish, at least with you yeah. as a director. With it's me one as of the a hardest. director, yes. <laughs> Sister Robert Ann and I never uh, see eye to eye a lot of times. Um, and not because she's my wife, because I'd be the first to tell her she was doing something wrong, of course, as her husband. But, uh, and I've heard you do yes. it. So. But uh, she, she does a wonderful job. I mean, I, it was the first, you know, she took all the direction, and she went through it and made her own Robert Ann, and it's really an enjoyable one. So it's exciting to, and comfortable to know that I have a Robert Ann that I don't have to worry about and that could get through everything. Um, Kevin Hammonds from New York, who's written many shows for us, uh, has never actually been in any of our nonsense productions but his talent and his hard work I know um, and I'll be anxious to see what he'll do with Sister Amnesia mm -hmm. which is not an easy role so it'll be interesting no. to see what he does. Um, Kevin's an actor with excellent comic timing. Yes I, I think it'll be interesting and, and exciting. Our sister Leo is brand new to us uh, to the theater. Um, I've worked with her at her school but uh, just a little bit I've seen she's already working very hard so that's exciting and of course our final sister will be uh, uh, Sister Hubert to Reverend Mother's Right um, will be yourself, and that's having played it before with you, it's, it's certainly, certainly going to be a lot of fun. I think the, the key is we're going to have a lot of fun because yeah. there's five good friends. That's true. That's yeah. very true. Our, it's funny that our characters are Reverend Mother, who's in charge of the convent, and Hubert is kind of always there helping out at her side, which is very much that's what's going you on and right me now. at our yes. theater. So yes. it's uh, very interesting. Now, uh, coming up, we're going to take a short break. Coming up after the break, uh, we're going to take a, a sneak peek into the world of nonsense as I'm going to be speaking with Sister Mary Regina, the Mother Superior of the Little Sisters of Hoboken. Uh, Sister Regina will be here to tell us all about the fundraiser production going on at the Corner Bistro Dinner Theater. So a quick look at one of the characters of nonsense coming back right after this. Welcome back to Artistically Speaking. I'm still John Baldino, and that's about all I can say for the set at the moment. Well, we just learned all about nonsense, amen, question mark, as we're uh, working title calling it right now, a production going on at the Corner Bistro Dinner Theater in Carbondale. And we're about to experience another first, an Artistically Speaking first, as we have a character actually step out of the play and onto the set of Artistically Speaking. We are about to meet the Reverend Mother, Sister Mary Regina, who is the Mother Superior of the Little Sisters of Hoboken. And she is joining us today in the PAX studios, high atop the Oppenheim building, to tell us all about what's going on at the Corner Beast Star Dinner Theater. Sister Mary Regina, Reverend Mother, welcome to the program. Good morning, Johnny. How are you today? I'm wonderful, Sister. Thank you for uh, getting up so early in the morning and joining us here. Oh, we're used to getting up early with the prayers and all. Of course, of course. You, you do get up awfully early for prayers every morning, don't you? Every morning we go down to the chapel and we say our prayers and then we start the day out. I see. Will you pray for me tomorrow, Reverend Mother? Oh, we'll always pray for you. I, I'm sure you are. Now, tell us a little bit about, there's a benefit performance going on, I understand. Uh... Yes, uh, Sister Julia, child of God, she made some vichyssois soup and Nearly all our sisters died of botulism. I see. Yes. And so we're having this little benefit, you see, and, and, and gathering the sisters who we thought were the best at what they do uh -huh. to put on their talents to raise money to bury the last of the sisters because, well, we had to put them in the freezer, you see. There's not enough money. Uh, uh, Hubert claims that it's because I went and bought a VCR, but that, uh -huh. that's not the fact at all. We're just a little short on funds. So we thought if we put this benefit on, well, then we would gather enough cash to bury those last dead sisters. I see. So tell us a little bit about the benefit itself. Well, we have with us Sister Hubert, mm -hmm. yes, who is my right hand and helps me with everything. She's the head of the novices. I see. Uh, and she will be performing some of her numbers there. And we have Sister Robert Ann, and uh -huh. well, she's a little bit streetwise, but nonetheless, she has a little bit of talent going on there. Uh, and we have Sister Mary Leo, she's very sweet. She likes to do that ballet stuff. Mm -hmm. And Sister Mary Amnesia, who 
really doesn't know who she is or where we found her, but uh, we take care of her. We just put her in the show so we know where she is and not causing no troubles. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense, sister. Oh, of course, me. I'll, I'll be doing some numbers, too. How do you fit into the whole big picture? Well, you see, I used to be in a circus act with my family. Really? Yes, we had a high wire act. Yeah, they were built as two tons on a tightrope. Uh. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, I, I, we, from there, I joined the convent, so that's a little bit behind me, but whenever I get a chance to shine in the spotlight, I certainly like to do it, Johnny. Uh-huh. Well, that's why you jumped at that opportunity when we called you to come oh, down here to the course, studio. Uh, I love the camera. Uh, is, is this your, your first television experience? Uh, yes, it is. Really? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. We, we're working on currently um, our own little studio for Christmas time, yes. Oh, I yes, see. Yes, we're going to do a little Christmas show and a little closed circuit TV for the local cable shows. But the, this is a kind of a little trial before we get to that December date. Uh, now, the order is the, the Little Sisters of Hoboken, the Little correct? Sisters of Hoboken, that is correct. Formerly the Order of St. Winifred, if I'm, yes. if I'm correct. Well, correct. Uh, tell us a little bit about the history of the order. Well, we uh, started off as a uh, helping out lepers, yes. Uh, and it was just Sister Hubert, myself, and Robert. And uh, that's how we started out, and, and it was, you know, it's a long story and a little bit distasteful and all. But we start off running a leper colony, and from there we made our way to do our works of the Lord in Hoboken. Uh, and of course we joined the other sisters with us now, Amnesia and, and Leo and some others. But, but mainly Robert and myself and Hubert, we were always good close sisters. And has, was it a lifelong dream of yours to be a sister? Uh, all the time that you were in the circus, was, was the sisterhood something that you always wanted? Well, it really wasn't, you no. see. Uh, my mom and my dad there, the, the rope broke, and they ended up into near-death situation. Yes, so, so I promised the Lord right then and there that if he'd uh, help them out, I'd become a nun. Uh. So this is where I am, but I love it. I love it, and I, and I love taking care of every need that the other sisters have. Could be a little rough sometimes dealing with Robert and Amnesia, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of fun. So, what's a day in the life of a mother superior? Well, a lot of headaches, of course. Yes, but Sister Hubert helps me out a lot. You know, mm -hmm. I, I kind of between me and you, I push off some of the problems on her, so I get a little peace ah, and quiet in I the see. office. Okay, but it's very busy. We start with prayer, and we have a little breakfast together, and we do our daily duties in the, the convent and then some more prayer, and then some more food, <laughs> and then some more duties, and then some more prayer, and then some more food, and then some more prayer, and well, then we go to bed. <laughs> Sounds like an exciting, fun-filled day uh, every day. Well, in the yes, add in those other sisters, and it's one heck of a day. <laughs> I could just imagine. So the benefit is going on. Uh, it's it's up and coming. Uh, yes, it's, it's coming up very fast. The the corner bistro in Carbondale has been kind enough to house the convents. Uh, oh yes, yes. So we made sure Sister Julie, a child of God, is on cooking the food for the. the okay, dinner. so she won't be in the kitchen. No, she won't be okay, in the kitchen. Okay, this, so this it's is a good safe thing. To come. Yes. yes. Uh, we'll be doing the benefit to raise the money. So we hope everyone comes out and, and supports us. We're in rehearsals now with the sisters and. I'm just happy that I got out of the rehearsals for a while, left it with Hubert, and I'm here with the camera. <laughs> How is the rehearsal period going? Oh, it's going wonderful. Yes, all the sisters are working their habits off, trying to, to get their acts together and make the show work. Yes. So um, now tell us a little bit about how each of the sisters fits into the show. You touched upon it a little bit. Um, well, I asked each one of them to, to prepare something that would best show off what they do. And, mm -hmm. and that's why Sister Leo, she has a beautiful ballet that she does. Oh, she's a ballerina. Yes, she's a ballerina. Oh. She, she kind of wishes that was one of her callings in life, but mm -hmm. we can't have her you know, wearing the tutu. And the, so, but she'll be Not showing Not even a off. black and white tutu. Oh, no, work no, now. no. Okay. But, but she'll be having her little toe shoes on, and she'll be doing a little dance mm -hmm. for us. And, and of course, within the, the, the means of our Lord. But, of course. And uh, Sister uh, Robert Ann, uh, she has something called habit humor. Now, I'm, I'm not too keen on it, and I, I really hope that she doesn't be pulling it in the show, but she does thingies with her veils to make these characters like Indians and, 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 and Heidi and all this stuff. It sounds creative. Well, yeah, she's creative, all right. Uh, and Sister Hubert, of course, her and I will be doing our little, our little song together, yes. Just a couple of sisters, I call oh. yes. Yes, uh, and uh, Sister Amnesia, well, uh, we don't know what she'll do. She has this puppet, but I don't allow it anywhere near us because it gets her in trouble all the time. But I hope that it doesn't show up. Uh, because puppet. Yes, a, a little sister puppet. Sister Marionette is her name. Oh. Yes, but we, we, we don't encourage that at all means, although sometimes Hubert does. But I, I try not to, yes. Probably, uh, probably for the best. For the best, indeed. How long have you been teaching? 
Oh, well, I don't think it's polite to be asking oh. a sister their age and how long they're teaching, Johnny, but uh, <laughs> nonetheless, thank you very much. A long time. I should say, has teaching been a large part of your career? Oh, yes, really? yes, 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 it has. I've been there quite a long time. I've seen a lot of uh, little kids grow up to be big kids, some bigger brats, but mm. some nonetheless <laughs> go on to good and better things, yes. Do you expect a lot of support from students and parents now as oh. we put together this fundraiser? Well, I hope so. I hope they all come out. You know, that's an extra bonus point. <laughs> yes, Sister <laughs> Robert Ann is giving them all an extra check mark on their, their exam if they show up at the benefit. Ah. They just bring their ticket in to her and she'll give them a little extra check. How about that? Yes. Uh, the, the, the kids seem to really like Sister Robert Ann. Well, she can relate to them. You know, yes. uh, sometimes I can't relate to her, but, but she can pretty much get through to anyone. Now, Sister Amnesia, she's, she teaches classes also? Uh, no, she works no. in the cafeteria. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. She's, uh, you know, not knowing who she is or where she came from, she kind of forgets a lot. So we yeah. put her in the cafeteria and we put a little plastic cap on her veil and, and she dishes out the franks and the beans and stuff like that. Wonderful. Well, Sister, thank you so much for joining us. Well, it was a pleasure. And uh, best of luck with your benefit performance. Thank you very much. And we have been talking with Sister Mary Regina, the Mother Superior of the Little Sisters of Hoboken, about their upcoming benefit performance. It's Nonsense Amen happening at the Corner Beast Star Dinner Theater in Carbondale, May 11, 12, 17, 18, 19, 282 7499 for tickets. For information, you can always get in touch with us at artspeaking at paxemail.com. That's going to wrap it up. My thanks to Sister Regina and to Rob Misko. So until next time, keep the stage lights lit, the music playing, and let the artwork abound for all to see. I'm John Baldino, artistically speaking. <laughs>